Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have the same two vectors as we did in the previous video. And again, we're trying to find the direction cosines of a vector perpendicular to those two vectors, but we're not allowed to use the cross product. We're supposed to use the dot product. So we have to come up with a different strategy. How do we do that? Well, we realize that let's call the other vector that's perpendicular to A and B, let's call it C, so we know that C is perpendicular to A and C is perpendicular to B. And then we realize with the dot product, if two vectors are perpendicular and we take the dot product, the result is zero. That means that when we do C dot A, we get zero. And when we take the dot product of C dot B, we get zero as well. We know that because Two vectors are perpendicular, the dot product to two of two vectors must therefore equal zero. Let's write the definition down. So we have c dot a is equal to the magnitude of c times the magnitude of a times the cosine of the angle between them. And since theta is equal to 90 degrees, that then implies that the cosine of 90 is zero and therefore the dot product is zero. All right, but now how does that help us? Well, let's see here. Let's take the dot product of both of these and see what we get. So the dot product of c dot a is equal to, well, let's see here. We first need to write c in a general format. So let's do that first. So the vector c is equal to c sub x in the i direction plus c sub y in the j direction plus c sub z in the k direction. So now we have a general form of the vector c and we have the form of vector a. So we know that this is equal to cx times ax plus cy times ay plus cz times az and so we know that that must equal to zero in other words a sub x it's two so two times c sub x plus three times c sub, sub y minus one times c sub z must equal zero and so we have one equation here with three unknowns c sub x, c sub y, and c sub z. Let's do it again, but now with the b vector. So we can write that c, sub c dot with b is equal to cx times, not ax, but bx, wrong vector, plus cy, by, plus cz, bz. And of course, we note that that is also equal to zero, and then we plug in the values for the three components of b. So then we can write that uh, 1 times c sub x plus 2 times c sub y plus 1 times c sub z. That is going to be equal to 0 as well. And now we have a second equation, again with the three unknowns, c sub x, c sub y, and c sub z. Now, of course, in order to solve all three of them, we would need three equations, but I think we might be able to get away with it because notice here that if we're going to take the magnitude of C, that will be equal to the square root of C sub X squared plus C sub Y squared plus C sub Z squared. And since I'm going to need that, when I calculate the direction cosines, we might be able to eliminate one more of the variables. So first what we're going to do is we're going to write c sub x and c sub y in terms of c sub z by taking those two equations and manipulating them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the bottom equation. I'm looking for my red pen here. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation uh, times a negative 2. If I do that, I get the following. I get negative 2 c sub x minus 4 c sub y minus 2 c sub z is equal to 0 and then if I take this equation and add it to the first equation here I get a positive 2 c sub x plus 3 c sub y minus 1 c sub z is equal to 0 and if I add the two together now what do I get? The c sub x drops out here I have a minus c sub y minus 3 c sub z is equal to 0 and then if I solve that for c sub y, I can say that c sub y is equal to negative 3 c sub z. All right, so now I've written c sub y in terms of c sub z. I can do that again a second time by, let's see here, if I multiply this one times 2 and this one times negative 3, 
then I can do this again. So here I'm going to multiply this one times 2 and this one times a negative 3. If I do that, I get the following two equations. Let me write that down. So that would be 4c sub x plus 6c sub y minus 2c sub z is equal to 0. So that's taking this equation, multiply times 2. Now I take this equation, multiply times a negative 3. So I get a negative 3c sub x, negative 6c sub y, negative 3c sub z, that's equal to 0. When I add the two together, notice the c sub y's drop out. I get a c sub x minus 5c sub z equals 0, or c sub x equals 5c sub z. All right, now I'm ready to find the direction cosines. Well, maybe not quite yet. What I'm going to do now is replace this c sub x and c sub y, what that's equal to in terms of c sub z. So I can write that c sub the magnitude of c is equal to the square root of c sub x squared. Now c sub x squared is 5c sub z squared. That would be 25c sub z squared plus c sub y is a negative 3c sub z. When I square it, I get 9c sub z squared plus c sub z squared. Let me put a line in here so we don't get confused. There we go. So notice that is equal to 25 plus 10. That would be equal to the square root of, well, let's see here, 35 times c sub z because the common factor in all three terms is a c sub z squared. If I take the square root, that's c sub z. So the magnitude of c is equal to the square root of 35 times c sub z. Hmm. All right. Now that I have that, I can find the direction cosines. I can say that the cosine of alpha is equal to the cosine of beta is equal to and the cosine of gamma is equal to. And by definition, it's equal to c sub x over c. It would be the magnitude of, or should be the, the x component divided by the magnitude of the vector. Here it's the y component divided by the magnitude of the vector and the z component divided by the magnitude of the vector. So c sub x is equal to 5c sub z divided by the square root of 35c sub z. c sub y is equal to the negative 3, negative 3 c sub z divided by the square root of 35 c sub z. And finally, the cosine of gamma, that would be equal to c sub z divided by the square root of 35 times c sub z. Then, of course, you realize that all the c sub z's cancel. And this becomes a 1. And notice I have the very same direction cosines as I did on the previous video. 5 divided by the square root of 35 minus 3 divided by the square root of 35 and 1 divided by the square root of 35. And so since I got the very same direction cosines and I checked them on the previous video, they're probably correct. But that's how we do it using the dot product.